If I can just intervene at sure. this moment. I mean, one of the things, uh, yesterday when uh, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah was uh, talking to me, we had a session with him, uh, the former CEO of Afghanistan. He said that it is, his advice to India was that India should engage with the new government. There's a clear and present danger for us in terms of the security issues that uh, the Taliban regime throws up in terms of the jihadi groups. So he says to, to engage with them on that and to provide humanitarian assistance, even if we don't want to pro proceed with uh, recognizing the government at some point. So what is, uh, have we engaged with the Taliban regime? And what is, uh, you know, what is the movement forward? Do you think uh, Dr. Abdullah's advice is something worth looking at? Well, uh, nimbleness and suppleness in, dip in diplomacy also means that you, you have to uh, reach out to all those that you have to deal with, irrespective of what uh, they represent. Um, this dispensation is in power, and we have engaged them. We have uh, had uh, our ambassador in Doha, Qatar, uh, deal with their uh, delegation there at senior levels. We've got some reassurances and some sense of uh, how they would like to see our involvement. Uh, I think they were um, quite uh, positive in terms of uh, our continued engagement on the development front, uh, on um, retaining our diplomatic presence. Uh, but what is important also is that we need to watch carefully uh, how the situation on the ground unfolds. After all, um, we were involved in the UN Security Council when Resolution 2593 was adopted. India was the president of the council. We steered the negotiations towards a conclusion that really, in many senses, is seminal in determining the international community's approach towards Afghanistan. And that resolution calls for an inclusive, negotiated political settlement. It calls for the human rights of women, children, and minorities. It calls for humanitarian access, direct humanitarian access to the international community. It also demands that Afghanistan does not in any way use its territory to the detriment of others in terms of terrorism. So these are very important factors in how we deal with Afghanistan. And in that context, I think we have to really see how that evolves. I mean, we have seen the formation of a government that is far from inclusive or representative. You've seen the DG of the ISI go there and facilitate a government that has 35 members of the cabinet who are designated individuals in the UN Security Council's list. Uh, so that's not a great start. And I think we have to carefully watch how the situation, as I said, develops. Uh, the international community has significant leverages. We've got uh, frozen assets, uh, which are in bank accounts abroad. Uh, you've got uh, the entire development partnership uh, paradigm, which is there. Afghanistan does depend on external resources to a great extent. Um, but as far as humanitarian assistance is concerned, I think we, like many other members of the international community, have said that we separate what is in the welfare of the people of Afghanistan from the actions of the present dispensation in power. In other words, we uh, are more than willing to provide uh, humanitarian assistance. You have to remember that India has been a constructive player in Afghanistan. Over the last 20 years, we have invested over $3 billion in Afghanistan's development directly. We are the only country that has development projects in every of the 34 provinces of Afghanistan. So we are happy to continue the humanitarian assistance part. And, we and that is what I think Afghanistan uh, representative asked India recently, humanitarians We've to said start with. Unhindered, unimpeded, direct humanitarian assistance to be distributed through the UN and other civil society organizations is what we have asked for. We have delivered 1 million tons of wheat to Afghanistan over the last uh, 15, 20, 20 years. We are happy to do much more in helping the people of Afghanistan. But the yeah. conditions have to be appropriate. For sure. You have set the benchmarks in the UN resolution, and that, those are the things India will look for. But I want to come to what you had mentioned, the concerns that India has of the role that Pakistan is playing in Afghanistan, the fact that the ISI chief went there, the fact that the Haqqani network seems to dominate the current regime's government on this matter. How serious is that problem for us? What is the role you see Pakistan uh, playing over there? What are the dangers for India? Well, when you support and nurture um, an ideology that, is, uh, that uh, is associated with acts of terrorism, extremism, radicalism, you have to be careful that it doesn't come back and it's not counterproductive. And what we are really looking for is responsible actions by those who are able to control the situation in Afghanistan. So whether it is Pakistan or whether it is uh, the, the Taliban, we expect that there would be actions that are responsible 
and that in many senses the commitments they've made to the international community, which were conveyed fairly early on in, in the game, uh, are lived up to. And those commitments are benchmarks, as you mentioned, that I think we, as well as most members of the international community, expect to hold them to. I think that is very important. Obviously, uh, we, would like to, you know, we would like to do everything possible to ensure that this does not impact adversely on us. Uh, we are already seeing some impact of some of this uh, situation. Whether there is a direct linkage or not, we are not sure. But there are concerns out there, and we have to be able to use uh, our instruments of diplomacy or every instrument available to us to ensure that uh, we are insulated from the impact of such uh, you know, outcomes that could be detrimental to our interests.